Thank you, Honorable Minister and fellow presenters. Thank you, you made my job extremely easy um, by providing the context to uh, this presentation. The overall MCOW strategy and the gender management system that Phoebe referred to earlier. So basically what I'm going to do is not enumerate all the indicators that we're familiar with talking about equal numbers and committees, but I'll describe some of the good examples and good processes which we can learn from to put in place these approaches. Because very often people say, you know, we've agreed gender is important. But how do you go about it? How do you actually make it happen? So you, you will forgive me that some of the indicators are not really uh, necessarily input-output process or impact indicators, but for sure you'll be able to see what is the approach that you would use as an institution, as an, a utility, as a government, to, to move towards a place where there's gender equality being promoted. And I'll end my presentation by describing some of the opportunities that we see within the seven points of the MCA gender strategy that give us you know, a great opportunity to, to, to realize uh, gender equality from the wash angle. So I'm going to begin with an example from one of the small, some of the small towns in Peru which the water and sanitation program worked with. So the context on this side and then some of the examples of the things that, uh, that, that, that we should be looking for on, on the, on the, on the right-hand side. So in the small towns, uh, what they, we found was a typical situation of how small towns do not have good managed services. You have services that are unreliable, very poor communication, very unclear management. Sometimes you find local authorities running the services uh, without a professionalized system. So the intervention came in to improve the services, but also to ensure that gender equality was promoted. And the opportunity there and the enabling environment that was uh, hinged on to create this was the law of equal opportunity in 2007. And this law said that in the public space there will be equal opportunities for women and men to uh, articulate and to determine their development. And the local authorities in a number of small towns where this intervention was done used and built on this logical opportunity to institute uh, a gender equal oversight committee in these small towns. They hired a private operator to improve and professionalize the services. But an important thing was the cost of water. Very often the cost of water is prohibitive and very often we don't know uh, what uh, the thoughts are of the community when it comes to setting these tariffs. What they did is they held separate consultative meetings with women and men to decide what will the tariffs be. And the idea of willingness to pay very much um, influenced the final setting of the tariffs. And we visited Peru uh, just earlier this year, January, February, and I must admit that the tariffs are too low, not quite meeting the, co the cost of operational maintenance. However, the fact that there was an, an energy and effort put inside to make sure that, that there was ownership around the management of these services. Uh, an important point also that we observed is that water is being used for multiple uses. It's not, as Barbara's mentioned, we cannot continue to say it's only water for domestic uses. Women need water for other uses as well. Uh, they might have a small cafe, a cafe, they might be making food, it could be something bigger. It doesn't always necessarily need to be small, but the idea of enabling uh, the services to be sold at a flat rate that doesn't discourage people using it for other uses besides domestic uses. Another example is an initiative in Indonesia for uh, a sanitation initiative that the approach that was used was saying that all these different stakeholders need sanitation. Sanitation has to be affordable. The designs have to be usable. Um, how are we going to ensure that the, 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 this sanitation program is going to be beneficial uh, not only to the mainstream, but to the to poorer communities, to the marginalized communities. So they did separate planning, very intense separate planning um, meetings between women and men. But before that, the people at the level of the local authority, the decision makers were trained. 
so that their eyes were opened and they could have a gender lens uh, and that they would be able to facilitate this process and own this process. So the training aspect is, is very, very important. And in the gender management system that Phoebe mentioned earlier, we, we talk about uh, processes, processes and mechanisms. Here, we're, this, I think, example really looks at the mechanisms, the trigger of awareness. Uh, gender is really about awareness. Can you actually notice that it's not working for one part of your community? So the, the mechanism of awareness raising um, and the mechanism of uh, monitoring and having indicators that can help you to know what's happening with the different groups um, is, is key uh, here. Uh, and then, of course, the process of an action plan um, is, 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 is what gives engine and, and um, accelerates the process. Uh, another example of a very important process when it comes to wash is hand washing. We know that one of the leading causes of child mortality is diarrheal disease. It, it beats uh, respiratory diseases and all the other tropical diseases, and at least in, in, in developing countries right now. So if people are able to wash their hands, you can actually immediately cut the number of those with, uh, with uh, you're not showing me the paper yet. Um, you can actually cut the number of people <laughs> with, uh, who do die from diarrhea. So hand washing is so important. And traditionally, we know that women play this role. But what we found from the study was that if you involve men, then you create a role model in the household. And you release resources for soap and facilities for hand washing. So the idea of a framework of cooperation, not just saying hand washing is about women, but it's about men as well. And that we begin to monitor whether hand washing is taking place and whether we've immobilized everybody in the household to make sure that hand washing now happens. Now, in the framework, the gender management system, there's this whole idea of institutions. The institutions that are in the sector, many of you here influence institutions. You have ministries and you have uh, utilities and you have uh, regulatory agencies, institutions are really important because they are the ones that set the pace. If you're not walking the talk, um, if you're drinking wine and preaching water, or is it drinking water and preaching wine? But you, you have to walk the talk. So the idea is that you as a water sector agency, you embrace the idea of gender and that you actually reflect it in your numbers and you actually reflect it in your capacity to actually do things in a different way. And what the Ministry of uh, Water in Uganda did was they put in place this gender strategy. And they're on their second strategy now, and, and they're actually um, using the reforms in the sector to take advantage of the fact that you're doing a reshuffle to say, let us see whether we can increase the numbers and increase the parity between the participating women and men. And is it numbers for numbers sake? As Barbara said, definitely not. It's not just about numbers. Sometimes you need more women in certain instances. Sometimes you need less, and I'm almost finished. So here is our concluding slide. The enabling environment are the policies, the institutions and the human resources, the working groups, the staff in these water sector agencies. The mechanisms are the awareness mechanisms, the performance boundaries, and the sanctions and the penalties. We need these mechanisms because sometimes people won't do it even if it's in the policy. If, as we'll hear on Thursday, at Kenya, they put a performance contract in place and so there was an incentive and there was a penalty. And that also makes a difference to whether something gets done uh, in the sector. And then the processes are the gender action plans. So, the opportunities, the monitoring and evaluation framework that we're working on, we've begun to work on with AMCAO and governments. The South-South exchange within the seven points, what are countries doing in the Africa region? Research to provide evidence and move away from anecdotes. And finally, ensuring that we have the institutions, working groups, and uh, virtual communities of practice to ensure that we become much more gender aware and have the lenses on collectively. Thank you very much for your attention.